gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Paul Ignatius, former Secretary of the Navy, and the Honorable Ray Mavis, Secretary of the Navy. Yes, please be seated. Secretary of the Navy Ray Mavis is our 75th Secretary of the Navy. He has said that one of his favorite things to do as Secretary is what brings us all here together today. Please welcome our host for this ceremony, Secretary Ray Mavis. Uh, okay. <coughs> My notes are so I don't forget to introduce any of the distinguished uh, folks we, we have here today, starting out with our honoree, Paul Ignatius, his family, <coughs> David, uh, his wife, Nancy, I'm so sorry, son, David, wife, Eve, and granddaughter, um, Alex um, Ignatius. Uh, we have several former secretaries of the Navy. Uh, John Dalton, uh, Will Ball, <coughs> Sean O'Keefe. We've got uh, B.J. Penn. Uh, we've got H.T. Johnson, Charles Bowser, uh, and his wife Mary. Um, all incredibly distinguished predecessors in this office. I had a few questions about Sean O'Keefe because he uh, was Chancellor of LSU for a while, but uh, he has uh, proven himself and has risen above uh, those humble beginnings. Um, the Commandant of the Marine Corps honors us with his presence, uh, Commandant Jim Amos, and the Vice Chief of Naval Operations, Mark Ferguson. And uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, the Chief of Naval Operations, since his regrets, he is, uh, he is on travel today, or he would have, have been here. Um, you have uh, the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, Juan Garcia, the Acting Assistant Secretary of the Navy for <laughs> the Comptroller, uh, Charlie Cook, uh, Carla Lucchino, uh, the Administrative Head of Administration for the Secretariat, Tom Tesh, um, is here. And in the back, uh, Thomas Opal, my special assistant. Uh, Pamela Kunze, uh, Public Affairs Officer for the Secretariat, did the introduction. There is a lot of accumulated wisdom here uh, from our former secretaries, from our current serving military and serving civilians. Uh, we are here to honor today uh, the accumulated wisdom and experience of someone who preceded us all in this office and who uh, in many ways set the standard for what the Secretary of the Navy should be in the way uh, this job should be approached. Paul Ignatius, the son of Armenian immigrants, uh, who uh, began his autobiography by saying that his service as a lieutenant in the United States Navy was transformative, and he came out uh, with far more confidence than he had gone in, and I think that's true for so many of us who served. He uh, went to Harvard Business School following the war. During the war, he was on the USS Manila Bay, uh, was in Northern Japan, Hokkaido, with uh, Admiral Frank Jack Fletcher uh, receiving the surrender from the Northern Japanese forces. And then went to Harvard Business School, founded a very successful consulting company, came into government, was Assistant Secretary of Defense before he was Secretary of the Navy. While he was Secretary, some of the things he had to deal with, uh, the Tet Offensive, capture the Pueblo uh, by the North Koreans, uh, the F-111 uh, fighter program, and budget issues. So just to recap, uh, a counterinsurgency war, problems with the North Koreans, a joint fighter um, for all the services, and budget issues. We've come a long way <laughs> since, uh, <laughs> since your day <laughs> here. 
the DDG-117, the PCU, pre-commissioning unit, Paul Ignatius, um, will be one of the backbones of the fleet. The, the DDG-51 program built in Pascagoula, Mississippi, and in Bath, Maine, are some of the most capable, versatile ships that the United States Navy possesses, uh, capable of simultaneously pursuing undersea warfare, surface warfare, air warfare, and now ballistic missile defense work. Uh, it um, is truly the workhorse of the fleet. It's what people think of when they think of the United States Navy, the United States naval ships. The Ignatius will be in our fleet for three to four decades. It will sail virtually every ocean of the world. And many times, the sailors on the Ignatius will be the only Americans that people from other countries will ever meet. Uh, it will be a reminder of the experience, the wisdom of Paul Ignatius. And you have to look at this in Navy terms for the long haul. There are sailors who will sail on the Paul Ignatius who have not yet been born uh, today. And so in the you know, first, thank you all for being here. Thank you, to Secretary Ignatius, for your service. And in the immortal Navy words, God bless the USS Paul Ignatius and all of those who sail in her. Mr. Secretary. I was really quite overwhelmed when uh, Secretary Mabus told me that this ship was going to be named in my honor, and I thank you and the Navy Department for this. Um, the Navy <coughs> meant a lot to me uh, in my life. I was lucky as a, as a young naval officer to serve under a really quite wonderful captain named Fitzhugh Lee, who earned the Navy Cross twice uh, on our ship. And one of the great pleasures I have as, uh, as Secretary of the Navy was speaking to an audience in uh, San Diego where Captain Lee, then Vice Admiral Lee, retired, was in the audience. And I'm sure the last thing that Captain Lee would ever have thought was that a young lieutenant in his ship would someday be Secretary of the Navy, but it did happen. And I asked him to stand, and, uh, and I expressed to the audience uh, how much I had uh, how much I had learned from him. Uh, I spent eight years in the Pentagon. The last two as Secretary of the Navy, but prior to that, as Assistant Secretary of Defense particularly, I worked closely with the Navy Secretariat and with the uniformed leaders of the Navy and the Marine Corps. I was fortunate to have wonderful people, both in uniform and in civilian clothes, uh, to assist me. Tom Moore was the uh, CNO. Uh, Leonard Chapman was the uh, Commandant. And I'm especially pleased that uh, Chuck Bowser and his wife, uh, Mary, are here today. Uh, Chuck was the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for uh, uh, Financial Management and quickly made himself indispensable to uh, the Navy. And if I remember, Chuck, you got involved in something that went on interminably that had to do with the Mark 54 torpedo. Was that it? No, it, it was, was the Mark 48. Mark 48 <laughs> torpedo. And, uh, but one, the point I think I want to make is how, I think, how effectively uh, Chuck and his uniformed counterparts and, and the rest of us worked with worked together. We, we had a very strong group of people. Uh, 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 the uh, Jim Bannerman, a legendary uh, civilian, was the Assistant Secretary for Procurement, <coughs> later Barry Shillito. And uh, Bob Frosch was the R&D Secretary. Bob later became the head of NASA. 
and the head of research at General Motors. Chuck became the Controller General of the United States. And this is an example, I think, of the, of the, high, of the high quality of the people. Uh, it, was a, it was a privilege for me because I would loved my time in the Navy in World War II, and it was a privilege to be, uh, to be the secretary. It meant a lot also, I think, for my family, and particularly for my wife, who felt very much at home in, in, the, uh, in the Navy uh, surroundings. And she was very helpful to me. <clears throat> when I was first uh, offered an opportunity in President Kennedy's administration to come into the government, uh, I was flattered to be asked. But my company was just beginning to be profitable, and I thought I'd love to serve in the government someday, but perhaps this wasn't just the right time. My wife looked at me and said, you know, maybe when you're ready to go in the government, nobody will want you to come. <laughs> well, I must say that did it, and I called back and, uh, I called back and said, uh, I'm your guy if you still want me. Uh, those of you who may have been at the Navy Ball will uh, excuse me if I repeat something I said that night about, about Nan. Uh, she struggled long and hard all those years raising our four wonderful children and uh, between changing diapers managed to earn a master's degree at American University in, uh, in international relations. But she was helpful to me in more ways than uh, than I can say. And as I said that night at the Navy Ball, there was one day, Secretary Mowers, when I came home from the office in a real snit. I don't know what had happened, but something had gone wrong. Perhaps you've had days like this also. And I went home and I couldn't stop talking about how cruel the world was and how unfair it was. And I went on and on and on and on. And when I finally ran out of gas, she looked at me and smiled and said, but remember, you're entitled to a 19-gun salute. <laughs> well, that, that, uh, that broke the ice. I don't think I have to tell you uh, how grateful I am to you for this, uh, this honor of having a ship uh, named after me. As I said, I was overwhelmed uh, when I learned about it. And I'm grateful to you and to the Navy Department and to all of you Thank you all for coming. A number of my successors or predecessors are here, and I thank, I thank you all for coming. And I join you, and God bless the United States, and God bless the United States Navy and the Marine Corps. Thank you very much. <laughs>